All right, Ryan here with longrangeonly.com. In this video, we're going to continue with the rifle build series, and today we're gonna to talk about actions. So what I've got here in front of me is some of the actions that I have used throughout the years. And we've got a pretty good range of actions here. And then I'm gonna throw in some video where I talk about uh, another action that I've used and then I'll, I'll kinda talk about why I included that action. So in no particular order, we're just gonna start walking through these and I'll do some drop-in video of close-ups of some of the features that I think are very important and may separate a certain action apart from another action. So we're gonna walk through them here. Down here I got the Stoll Panda, then I've got a Gunworks GLR, and then I've got a Kelbley Nanook. It is the only one here that is just the action. The rest of them are complete rifles. Then I've got a Kelbley Atlas Tactical in the Coda. I've got a Terminus Zeus, and I've got a Terminus, this one is actually a Helios, but they have since changed the name to Kratos. And then I've got a Defiance Machine Ruckus Ultralight in a mid-length. And we're not really going to focus on short, long. We're going to talk about the features and, and why uh, you might pick one over the other. The other action that we are going to include in this video is the Fierce Edge action. And I'll drop in a separate video for it because I don't have possession of it right now. But real quickly, why I included it is because you can buy it as a complete setup. It comes with the trigger, the bottom metal, and the action. My favorite thing about it is it's a push feed, control round feed. We'll kind of talk about that later. Um, and it feeds extremely well from the magazine. It's, it's probably the smoothest feeding action setup that I have ever experienced. So real quickly before we move on to the, the 700 clones and then some, some of these, not all these are 700 clones and we'll talk about that as well. But uh, the biggest reason why I would pick it is because of its ability to feed and it is a really nice smooth action. It's a three lug, so it is a little bit stiffer than, a, than some of these as far as opening, but it still has a lot of great features. Like I said, I'll talk more specifically about that in this cut in video for it. All right, in this segment, we're gonna take a look at the Fierce CT Edge action. So it would be the Fierce Titanium Edge action. And I throw that in here because I, I think it, it belongs in a discussion about which custom action you would pick. Um, there are some good, good pluses to it and then there's some negatives to it. Uh, let's start with the plus, pluses because that's really why I included it in here. Um, it is a side bolt release. It's a 70 degree bolt throw, three lug action. So starts with one of the, the good advantages here with a 70 degree, it's not gonna interfere with any throw levers that you may wanna use on your scope. Now, one of the negatives to that is it takes extra force to cock it, but it's not, it's not very much. And once you get the, the actions broke in, you really don't notice it. it. It's very smooth and you can cock it uh, without upsetting the rifle. So not a, not a big deal to me. It does have a cocking indicator for those that are interested in it. And so we'll take a look at the, like I said, it is a three lug. It does have a Saco style extractor. Uh, it's better in my opinion than the Remington 700's extractors, but I would much rather see like a M16, mini M16 style extractor or that type of thing. But since this is a Saco 85 clone, they, they went with the Saco extractor. The problem with the Saco extractor is from time to time they have been known to be ejected if you run a cartridge over pressure and, and wing by your head. So it's not the safest design. I've never ever personally seen it, but I have heard horror stories about it. 
Um, one of the other big advantages that we have to talk about when we're talking about this action is it's a control round push feed. And I say control round push feed, they call it a control round feed, but it's still a push feed. It still feeds if you want a single shot very smoothly, whereas some of the control round feeds must be fed from the magazine. And I'm not gonna get into the gunsmithing portion of it. Some of the newer ones that are control round feed will allow you to single feed, but a lot of them are magazine feed only. But uh, one of the reasons why I believe this belongs in this discussion is, it is without a doubt the single best feeding setup from the magazine that I've ever used. Now the magazine plays a, a role into it. It is a stagger feed uh, magazine, detachable box magazine, and it allows you to hold more cartridges in it. Uh, even with the WSMs and the Nosler cartridges, the rum cartridges, than some of the other options out there. That's also a plus. Um, but when you have rounds in the magazine, it's the most positive and smooth feeding action I've used, and I've, I've used almost all of them. When it comes to 700 clones, none of them really set themselves apart because they're all using the same magazine box setup. Uh, this one definitely differentiates itself from the others. Now, as far as feeding, uh, there was some early concerns just for those people that are watching it that may have been familiar with the, the Saco 85s or the early uh, maybe the early versions of the Fierce, although I think they have that, had that figured out. Uh, had to do with the extractor, or sorry, the ejector. It is a mechanical ejector. The, the ejector position wasn't quite right and it would fling it up and hit on your scope uh, turret. That's been fixed. I've never had a problem with this action doing that. Okay, now uh, we've set, we've talked about the biggest things on why I believe that you would pick this, and that, that is the feeding. Without a doubt, the feeding from the magazine. Now, the other thing that we need to discuss when we're talking about the pluses of this action is the titanium version with a titanium Murphy Precision rail, which does not come with it if you get this component action from Fierce. And then the bottom metal, the trigger and trigger guard all comes in at 32 ounces in titanium form. Now it's gonna be very, very difficult to get a Remington uh, 700 to be there. There are, there are some options out there, some of the super light titanium actions um, with the right magazine set up, a BDL from Hawkins or whatever, you're gonna come right in there at that 32 ounces, but there aren't gonna be a whole lot of them because by the time you get the bottom metal and a trigger and a trigger uh, guard and all that stuff, you're usually looking around five to seven ounces. So it's taken up a lot of a weight that uh, has to be saved in the action. Like I said, some of those lighter titaniums will meet that, but it is a consideration with this action. Now, the other thing, it does come with a trigger if you get it, the component action from Fierce and it's adjustable typically down to about two pounds. It's a very nice trigger, but I don't like the fact that it only goes down to two pounds. So it would need to have the trigger replaced. And there are only a couple options. I've used them both. The jarred trigger, which I wasn't a very big fan of. The trigger was great, but the safety is horrible on it. And it's not something that I would recommend. And then there's the Bix and Andy trigger, which is one of the best triggers I've ever used. The problem is they're $500. Uh, I think you get what you pay for, but a lot of people are gonna be wanting to steer clear of it because the titanium action alone is 1600 bucks, but that gets you the bottom metal, the magazine and everything. And it comes with that, the factory trigger. But then if you wanna replace it with a Bix and Andy, now you're in the $2,100 range. Still a, a decent deal, I think, when you're considering that you're getting titanium, you're getting the smooth feeding and just a great all around action. The other disadvantage outside of the trigger options is the inlet. So you have to have something that is inlet for Fierce or a Saco 85. Now the Fierce, act, uh, Fierce stocks, the regular edge stock is a very good stock if you're just doing a lot of uh, mixtures of shooting, hunting style, uh, style situations, or like still hunting, offhand shooting, or some prone, it's a good action, or sorry, a good stock, but uh, it's not the best for shooting prone. Their long range stock 
is a great stock, but it has a little bit too much drop at the heel for me. And then this one is sitting in a Macmillan A3 and it's about perfect. So as of right now, Macmillan still inlets for the Saco 85 and it would be a great option, especially if you're building a rifle from scratch. So I think that sums up why you might choose this Saco 85 clone, the, the fierce uh, CT Edge for your action. Now let's walk through the rest of these actions. So down here we've got the Stoll Panda. It's an aluminum action. It's been around for a long time. It's got tons and tons of uh, bench rest and F-class records, uh, tons and tons of wins. And why I included it is there's a couple reasons. Number one, like I just said, it's got tons of, uh, tons of wins. It's very configurable. You can get it set up like a 700 clone with a plunger style ejector. They're going to have Saco extractors. This one happens to have the TG ejector, which is a mechanical ejector. And I really like the action. Um, it's an aluminum action with a steel insert. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that says uh, that a aluminum action will out ag a steel action. And what do I mean by that? If you were to take hundreds of groups or thousands of groups, you would find that more consistently the aluminum actions will shoot smaller. That doesn't mean you can't get small groups out of steel actions. We, most of us have seen it and done it. Uh, I'm just saying that there's a lot of uh, evidence that says they'll shoot smaller. Now, on the flip side, why did I include this? When it's not really a hunting action, so a lot of our viewers are really just recreational shooters. They're shooting steel. They're just out plinking. Um, they may be shooting prairie dogs. Uh, any, any number of those things. I would probably say if I were doing like most of my shooting from a bench or even prone with a front rest or mainly shooting steel and I wasn't going to take the rifle and carry it around in the woods, this would be one of my top picks just because of uh, all of the great features that they have. And it, uh, it's going to be very well suited for a bench rest or a, like a, a front rest style setup. And you, you could use one for hunting. I would probably want to keep this particular action as, set up as a single shot. Uh, but... It wouldn't be my first choice if I were going to go hunting. But for shooting prairie dogs, uh, shooting steel off a bench, uh, off of a front rest where you're always prone, and it's more of a bench rest style situation, I would definitely consider this action. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stay with Kelbley. We're going to go with the Atlas Tactical here in this Coda. And like I said, I will get some close-up stuff and we'll... We'll drop in and talk about uh, the features. Same Saco style extractor, the same TG mechanical ejector, which I really like mechanical. If, you, if you're hunting and you want the cartridge out of the way, no concerns with it falling back in there, you just flop the bolt back and it's going to go out. If you're shooting at the bench or you're just target practicing and you don't want to go pick your brass up, you just pull it back slowly and take your brass out of there. Very nice feature, okay? Now, the F-Class Panda is the one I've got here. Like I said, it's very configurable. You can get it with uh, the uh, rail or you can get it with a Picatinny rail. I've got it with the Picatinny rail, 20 MOA base. Uh, that's how I prefer it. Like I said, you can go check out the specific options. This really isn't reviews on the action, just kind of talking about the big differences. Um, the, the Atlas Tactical is basically a Remington 700 clone, so it's going to have a, a smooth round top, several different options for uh, scope bases, Picatinny rails, and that type of stuff. And then we're going to go with the Nanook here. I'm getting ready to send this off to Alex Wheeler to have it chambered in a 30 nozzler and it's got all those same features it's got the Saco extractor TG ejector I should mention that these are all three bolt side bolt releases 
and this is also another 700 clone. What sets this apart is what sets this apart is the split integral Picatinny rail, 20 MOA, and it's all machined out uh, where you don't need the extra reinforcement for the steel. This comes in right at 26 ounces. The atlases are going to be a little bit heavier than that. Um, so as we're walking through these actions and what would separate one from another, I've had a lot of problems with scope bases come loose. Uh, Picatinny rails, tally style scope rings, I've had them all come loose. I've actually gotten to where I've started gluing all of my Picatinny rails on. So if, I, if, I, uh, if I'm building a rifle, I will JB weld the Picatinny rail on so I don't have any issues with it coming loose. The integral rail is something that I've, I'm leaning towards more and more considering a necessity for something where I have to rely on. Some of our hunts are super expensive and I don't have time for something to fail in the field. This is one more thing that absolutely can't fail. Uh, so one of the things that you would want to look in for an action uh, is the Picatinny rail integral to the action. And like I said, we'll, we'll walk through and, and talk about some of the other differences in some of these actions. So that's the Kelbley, the three that I've had experience with. Now let's go to the Gunworks GLR, and it's also a side bolt release, okay? Now those Kelbleys are all Remington 700 clones, and it, without getting too deep into the weeds, it really, they've basically made a lot of upgrades to the Remington 700, but for all intents and purposes, it's a 700 in the way it operates, the bolt, uh, how it operates, the caulking pieces, and the firing pin assembly. Now the Gunworks GLR is not a Remington 700 clone, and we do have a review specifically on this action already. I'll try to remember to drop a link down below, but they've got a bayonet style uh, caulking piece here. It's dual, so it's got two of these, and they ride in the action, so as you as you're caulking it, it takes some of that force off of the caulking piece and makes it a little smoother to caulk the action. And it also has dual ejectors, they're plunger style ejectors. And then the extractor is not like anything else out there really. It is machined into the bolt face and it's machined into the lug. And one of the biggest advantages of this is we get a better ejection angle. So a lot of you guys that have had experience with a Remington 700 uh, have probably noticed that it ejects at a very high angle. And a lot of times it'll hit these big uh, turrets on some of these scopes that we're using. It dings up your brass, it dings up possibly your turret, and it has the ability to make the spent case fall back into the action. So this is a very nice feature of the GLR. Um, one thing I don't really love about it is it has a little bit more cock on clothes than some of the others. Now if you if you buy it from Gunworks that you're going to get what you're going to get. It's not really a huge uh, input to the, the accuracy or the operation of the gun especially since when, when you start factoring in things like the uh, ejector sliding over the case, they're gonna not be as smooth as when there's no case in there at all like that. You're still gonna, you're gonna get some of the, the extractor sliding over the case is gonna cause it to be a little bit uh, more effort involved in actually closing the bolt. And when you start shooting these GLRs, it, really levels the playing field a little bit. But I do really like very well-timed actions. And what I mean by timed is the caulking piece and the trigger sear are timed such that there is no cock on close. Cock on close is most of these rifles, actually all of these are actually supposed to be uh, cock on open. The Remington 700 was designed to have a little bit of cock on close on purpose, but um, if it's not timed correctly, as you close this bolt, it's pulling back that firing pin a little bit, 
more. And I don't, they're, the numbers vary, but uh, it's just not something I really like, especially after you've had something like these terminuses or a bat machine um, or the defiances. There, once you've had something really nice like that, it's really hard to go back. Okay, so the GLR is available as a component. This, that's why I included it. We talked about some of the things that I really like about it and why you would pick that. It's not a 700 clone. I guess I should mention, and I did mention in the, the review, it is a toolless uh, bolt disassemble, so you can take it apart to clean it in the field if you need to. And it snaps right back together. They make it short, long, steel, titanium. So it is, it is something to consider if you're looking for, if it just drives you nuts that the, uh, some of these don't have a very great ejection angle. Now we're gonna come talk about the terminuses and uh, the Zeus has an integral rail. It's also available in a threaded action just like most are and you can get it with a quick change. The quick change for some of the guys out there that shoot a lot of different cartridges, want one action, one stock setup, it actually makes it very easy to go shoot several different barrels over multiple days. And uh, Joel has some pretty good videos out there. So if that's something that interests you, go take a look at that. Um, I have all the stuff to thread, uh, to, to take a threaded barrel off and put it back on. So it's less interesting to me, but I know a lot of people will benefit and really enjoy that feature. Okay, the Kratos does not have a uh, machined Picatinny rail. It's got, a, it's got some options as far as what you get on it, split rail, 100% rail. They al also make it in a light, so it'd be similar to the Nanook. It's got stuff that's machined out where we don't really need the reinforcements. Now, what really sets this apart is it's also not a 700 clone and we've also got a review on this helios it's a three lug it's got a roller cocking piece so because it's three lug and it's only a 60 degree bolt throw it requires the same amount of force to pull the firing pin back but it's done over a shorter amount of time so that means you have to actually do the same work in in less distance which makes it feel heavier um, the roller cocking piece back here pretty much takes that all the way, okay? It is a three lug. The bolts are 725 diameter. Um, I prefer that over the 750. Once you start getting into the 750, there's not a lot of lug contact, and I think the 725 diameter bolt is a nice trade-off. It does have an M16 style extractor, and it's got a plunger uh, type ejector. Now, because it's three lug, that M16 extractor can set a little bit lower in the action, so the ejection angle's a little bit better. These actions, it, you know, I, I've played with a lot of actions. I still love them. I am a, I'm a rifle nerd. I, I just can't get enough of it. I cannot really say that I love one more than the other, but I have to say that these terminus actions are they're probably the smoothest action I've ever felt. That if not, they're right there with the best. Um, so I definitely love that. Now the thing I really don't like about some of them, like these two here are pretty heavy. So if you're trying to do a lightweight build, that makes it kind of tough. Now they do make a Kratos light and that gets you down below 32 ounces. Uh, I think it's in the 27 ounce range. But the thing I don't love about that is it doesn't have a machined in Picatinny rail. Like I said, I have to glue these on. Matter of fact, this scope base right here has come loose. And I've got it JB welded on now. And it's been like that for quite a while. It's on a 338 Terminator. It hasn't come loose since, but I really don't, I really don't like the idea that I have to glue it on, which is what I have to do. On the other hand, this Nanook comes in around 26 ounces. It's got a machined in rail. And it's a very smooth action as well. I guess I should go back while we're talking about that. The Kelblies have uh, trigger hangers. So you can actually take two screws out and just pull the trigger out. What that allows you to do is basically quick change trigger. So if you're in competition or even if you're hunting, you could get another trigger hanger 
and put another trigger in it and not have to mess around with trigger pins and you could just swap in a new trigger. Um, which the, the Terminus has a really cool feature very similar to that. Um, and then the, one of the other things, like I said, we'll drop in some, it's got a uh, cantilever style side bolt release. So it doesn't, you don't have to worry about the side bolt release being below the stock line. And I really do like that. Now, the other thing, like, like I was just talking about, the trigger pins on the Terminus are basically screws. So you can just unscrew them with an Allen and then screw a new trigger in. You don't have to have a hammer and a, a punch to get those, those out. So, like I said, uh, it's got some great features. The 60 degree bolt throw, the three lug allows you to have a little bit lower ejection angle. Joel has taken care of all concerns about opening force on the cock that uh, people gripe about with the roller cocking piece. And I, these are really, really great actions. So definitely take a look at those. Like I said, we do have a review already on this Helios, which is now called the Kratos. So check that out. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. Okay. Next, we got Defiance. And they have so many options, it's really hard to cover them all. I've got a review on the Anti-X, and it's a great action. This one is a Ruckus Ultralight. They've got Defiant, or they got Deviants, they got Ruckuses, they've got maybe a couple more. Um, I, I can't name them all. This one happens to be a Ruckus Ultralight XM. So this is the medium link. So it's got an internal magazine box of 3.2 inches. They make it in long, they make it in short, they make it 100% uh, integral rail, they make them like a round Remington 700 clone, they make split uh, rails like the GA Hunter, the Anti-X, and then they've got like this ultralight where there's just uh, one pedestal in the rear, one pedestal in the front. Now, I really like this XM and I really like the ultralight. You just have to be careful on the ultralight that you get the, the distances of those pedestals so that you can make sure that your scope is going to work on this. So they have M16 extractors, they got plunger style ejectors, and they have several configurations up here as far as if it's a 700 clone style, if it um, has a flat nose, cone breech, all those types of things, cocking pieces uh, can be completely different. It's got a side bolt release, and but for the old, for the uh, big picture, it's really a 700 clone. Okay, awesome actions. They are definitely if the if the uh, terminus isn't the smoothest, these are gonna be a rival. They're right there. It, it's uh, very, very good. And I, I should touch on these. Of the actions that I've had, this, uh, the Terminus, the Defiance, and the Bats have been the best as far as action timing to the triggers, which, like I said, is a, is a big pet peeve of mine. In the field, in real operation, it's not a huge deal. But if it's too much cock and close, it could upset the rifle in the in the bag. If you're trying to do a quick follow up shot or something, um, that that could be an issue. Okay. Down here on the end, we've got the Bat Vampire. Okay. Bat has several options too. And before I wrap this up, we're going to talk really specifically about the Defiance and the in the Bat machine, but this is also not a Remington clone. Um, it has some of the features, some similar similarities. Like the cocking piece is kind of the same, but it's not exactly the same. The firing uh, controls are a little bit different. The bolt head looks similar to the same. It's a flat instead of like this one is a, they got the recessed. It's a mini M16 style extractor. It's got the plunger ejector here. Uh, the vampires have a bolt that you can disassemble very quickly and you can slide this apart and you can do a quick change for the front half of the, 
the bolt and have a different uh, caliber or different uh, family of cartridges, say, going from the Magnum to the 308 in a matter of minutes, okay? The other thing that sets the Vampire apart from a lot of the other actions is it is also an aluminum uh, with aluminum action with steel inserts and it's got split Picatinny rails. And that's gonna have the same advantages that I was talking about earlier with the Panda. It, like I said, is very, very smooth. I would say when you're talking about the feel of the actions, the, the Defiance and the Terminus feel, and I haven't done any measurements and I'm not going to because I don't think it really matters much, but just trying to describe to people, they feel like they have a little more tolerance in them. That's not necessarily a bad thing as long as they lock up tight, you're not gonna have a problem there. And it honestly does help them run a little bit smoother. Um, but sometimes it can cause binding. Now, I haven't had any binding with either one of these, uh, but it, it is, it's something to consider. They feel a little bit, I hate, I don't really want to say sloppy, but that, that's probably a good word to describe it. It's not negative, but, but they have a little more play. The bat is just as smooth, but it just doesn't feel like it has that kind of play in it. Okay. Now, we we talk about custom actions all the time, but most of these actions aren't really custom. Um, they are 700 clones that have a lot of awesome features, and, and they, in my opinion, they are better in every single way than a 700. Uh, in order to make a Remington 700 what these are, you're going to spend just as much money as if you would have just gone and bought one of these. So, they're, but they're not really custom. Do you have options? You have some options, different bolt handles, different uh, plunger versus uh, mechanical extractors, rail, uh, built in, not built in. Like I said, different bolt handles. Um, d you know, short, long, whatever. But uh, the Defiance and the Bat Machine, they truly are custom actions. Bat Machine and Defiance have so many options. You can pretty much call them up and tell them what you want, and they're probably going to be able to make it for you. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that you can't sit down and come up with some crazy configuration that they won't do, but pretty much everything you want to do, they will do. Whether you want to full rail, split rail, uh, the pedestal type stuff. Um, th they won't, neither one of them do titanium. So I, so out of these, the only one that does titanium here is the Gunworks. Um, the rest are gonna be steel, or like I said, the, the Panda, uh, the, the Kelbly, and the Bat have aluminum options as well. But pretty much everything else they can do for you. Okay, one other thing that uh, I didn't talk about, but the bat has a, well, the bat's a flat bottom, which is another thing I should talk about. The, the Kelbly Panda and the Bat Vampire are both flat bottoms. Now, in theory, that gives you more bedding surface. The, the flat of it is just a little bit better for bedding surface, which theoretically should make the gun, the, the barreled action more stable in the stock. Um, but all of these are integral recoil lugs, except for this Atlas Tactical. And realistically, if you're having a gun worth gunsmith put it together, it really doesn't matter. But if you're going to be doing barrel swaps, it can matter. Now, I do believe that this Atlas is a pinned recoil lug. Um, so it shouldn't be a huge deal, but a lot of the actions are going to machined in recoil lugs and it is something that I would probably pay extra for just because I do a lot of barrel swapping and I want the, I don't want to re-bed it every time I put a barrel in it and that's a whole other topic for discussion, but uh, I think I talked about everything I want to talk about and let's just talk about the big features when you're talking about this. So. Things like what kind of uh, extractor does it have? Now the Sako versus the M16. The M16 
is probably a little bit stronger. The Saco can, I've never seen it, I've never heard of it, but it's, it can come out of the action if you run really, really hot loads and it breaks. It can, it can come out and, and you know, hurt you, but I've never heard of it. Now the M16 is bigger, so it has a, it takes a little bit more force sometimes for the, that claw to come over the case, and you might have a little bit more force on uh, close. Um, the Gunworks has it integral to the lug area, which gives a better ejection angle. Those are some of the things you would consider there. I like the side bolt releases, which almost everything has these days. I do like what Terminus has done with the uh, cantilever style, so it doesn't have to mess with the stock, but if you have a stock inletted for your action, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, the, the other things are integral rails versus not integral rails. I prefer integral rails, but I wouldn't probably avoid buying an action because it's got, uh, it doesn't have an integral rail. Uh, some of the features that may drive you to picking one over another is things like the trigger hanger, which I, I really do like. Weight is definitely a factor. So with this, I can get down to 26 ounces with an integral rail with, you know, with no, no trigger. Uh, same with the Vampire, it's going to be in that 25 to 26 ounce range with no trigger attached. Both of those are going to be very, very nice actions. You're not going to have to worry about scope bases come loose and they're very lightweight. So those are, those are very nice features. If you're running uh, magazines and running them real fast and you want something super smooth, a lot of guys like that short bolt throw. So that would be a great reason to come look at the terminus actions. Um, like I said, they do also have a little bit better ejection angle. If you want something super specific, you may need to go to someone like Bat or Defiance to call and talk to them and see if they can meet uh, your demands as far as making it very, very specifically for you. Um, I, I think that covers everything. Um, if I did miss something or didn't ask, answer a question you may have, all right, we'll have a link to a thread on the forum in the description below. If I left anything out whatsoever, go ahead and head on over there, ask me the question, I'll try to get it answered for you. Uh, if you're not a member on the forum already, it's quick, it's easy to sign up, it's free. We'd love to have you. There's a lot of great information on there. We've got some cartridge guides. There's tons of valuable information in the forum. And there's a bunch of great guys willing to help. If we don't have the information, if I don't have the information, they can chime in and help you. We'd love to have you go ahead and head over there and sign up. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be notified of future videos. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a great day.